All right, so with everything removed, we'll move on to installing our billet oil pickup housing. So you'll take your supplied billet pickup housing. You'll want to very thoroughly clean this out with brake parts cleaner and compressed air because there's really no telling what kind of debris could be in here, but you want it to be surgically clean. You'll then take this um, piece in this direction, this valve, and then the spring with the plastic rod in the middle, and then this threaded cap. Now you'll put blue Loctite medium strength thread locker on this. It takes a 24 millimeter headed socket and you'll put it in there and you'll tighten it. Um, I use an impact driver set on low torque because you're just basically, there's no torque spec for it, but you're getting it snug. You definitely don't want that coming out. That's your pressure relief valve. Now, if you ever see over 110 PSI of oil pressure, I would suspect this could be the culprit. So make sure you shut down. You'll have to remove this and inspect to see what's going on there. I'm continually updating the hardware that I supply to give you the absolute best that you can have. And so this is gonna be the current offering that comes with this billet pickup housing. So you're gonna have basically two short bolts that are gonna go on this thinner flange down here because the actually rotating assembly, the crankshaft rotates right in front of these bolt heads. So that is very tight clearance. The other four holes will use studs. So you get these wave washers. This is an actual lock washer developed. Unlike the split lock washer, these are developed to prevent a fastener from backing off under vibration. So you stick those under the bolt heads on these two. Then you'll see you have four studs, four more wave washers, and four nuts. And these studs are actually pretty fancy because they have an Allen bit in the end to help you tighten it. So you're going to take a three millimeter Allen head bit to tighten these studs. Now the purpose of the stud is to give us full thread engagement into this aluminum casting because the problem I've encountered with the bolt is as you start to tighten it, you gradually gain more thread engagement as you tighten it. Whereas with a stud, we can put it in, get full thread engagement before we ever begin to tighten the nut. And the nut will also have full thread engagement. So our two shafts coming off our gears will align our housing. So you really don't have to put the studs or the bolts in first. And it's likely you probably won't be able to fit very many studs in. You'll get the housing lined up with the shafts and it's got to be perfect. So don't force it on. And once it's lined up, it slides on. You can feel it. it's very tight. There's no, there's no play in there. If you want to, you don't have to do this. You can put some thread locker on your studs. So you can install your two bolts on the bottom. You can put your four studs in, and tighten them down by hand. You really should not need to use the three, mil three millimeter Allen bit because we're not trying to torque that stud into that hole. Because what you're bottoming out on is the end of the thread in the hole. And that's not a good thing to try to torque against. So all we want to do, pretty much just hand tighten it to the bottom of the hole. Let that lock tight set up. Then you take your nuts and your wave washers. These should take a 10 millimeter socket to tighten. And then you just put your washer and your nut. And it's just a regular hex nut, it's not a lock nut. So it should thread on easily. You can torque all this to 10.4 newton meters and afterwards get your 27 millimeter socket on your crank bolt and rotate that crankshaft. Make sure you have clearance. Make sure nothing's hitting. And that's the installation of the billet pickup housing. Next thing we get is our pickup tube. This comes with a gasket. I like to smear just a skim coat of RT on both sides of that gasket. 
it takes up the scratches and unevenness on both sides. It helps it stick. We're not trying to make a full gasket out of our TV. We're just trying to take up the, the little nicks and stuff. And you'll put this on and it faces the front. So you get some M8 bolts with split lock washers. Just snug those down. I don't have a torque spec for that. Doesn't have to be super tight. So that gets put on like that. Now the next big change with our front sump pan is it's no longer a bi-directional pan. This is going to give clearance on the back side for the Toyota setups. It gives more clearance coming to the front, which we couldn't do when I was flipping it back and forth from Toyota to Jeep. And the Jeep setup doesn't work with this billet pickup housing. So we've gone to an asymmetrical design and I come all the way out and I give clearance over the turbo return uh, casting in the pan right here because you used to have to grind this out because the pan flange would cover that up so you had to grind that out so your oil had somewhere to escape and drain to. Now I've encapsulated this with the pan so you shouldn't have to touch this. You should be able to use your factory drain tube and not touch this casting. So I think that's a huge plus for this revision. The thing I don't know about is the dipstick tube because all the engines I have for R&D already have that dipstick tube modified. What I use is this pipe cutting tool from Rigid. Um, this is what I use to make brake lines and fuel lines. It's basically just a really small pipe cutter. You thread it in and the blade gets closer to the rollers. And you can put that on there to cut that dipstick tube off. I don't know if you'll need to do that or not. Basically that tube actually sits below the oil level from the factory. That keeps any blow-by or crankcase pressure from entering the tube and leaking out past the end of your dipstick. There is an O-ring on the end of the dipstick to also capture any of that blow-by if it would get that high. But that's the benefit of having the tube below the oil level. The oil level should be right flush with this mating surface of the pan. So if you can cut the tube so that it's at least above this height, or this depth I should say, that'll prevent the uh, blow-by from going up through your dipstick tube. And where that two bolt land is, it'll be somewhere up on this flange of the pan. So there's just, you know, test fit it. And if you have to cut it, all you do is take that pipe cutter and rotate it around, take a deburring tool and deburr the inside, and then cut the end of your dipstick tube off to match. And I like to put a little point on the end of the dipstick if I have to cut it, because that helps it slide down the dipstick easier. And then lastly, you'll install your oil pan. So, of course you'll want to make sure that it goes on without any interference or hitting anything. There's a very tight clearance between the front of this drive chain and sprocket. Make sure it clears the turbo oil drain over here. Make sure your oil pickup isn't hitting. Make sure your dipstick tube isn't hitting. So now you can see the tremendous amount of clearance we gain on the backside for our drag link and our tie rod on the Toyotas. You've got 19 fasteners. I've switched to hex head bolts. They are 10 millimeter head drive. It's a bolt with a split lock washer. Thread those in. You can torque them to the same 10.4 Newton meters. And I go in an alternating pattern, skipping and going every other bolt and I go around two or three times. Um, usually takes about three times to get them all torqued evenly. Again, with the I don't provide the gasket here, but I use the factory gasket and I smear a generous skim coat on both sides which helps glue the gasket in place. And again, I use the factory gasket. I don't supply that with the pans because they get damaged in shipping but I use the factory gasket with a skim coat of RTV on both sides, which glues it into position 
and takes up any nicks or scratches or unevenness you might see. And lastly, for our drain plug, I use the factory Mercedes drain plug so you can just order that factory part number should you ever need to replace your plug or your crush washer. So that should be it. I hope you enjoy the improvements I've made to this oil pan. I think it's fairly straightforward, easier than ever to install. And as always, if you have suggestions, I'm always open ears. So thanks. We'll see you in the next video.